Hello, everybody. Welcome to Extra Play. I have a guest here. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> okay, good intro. Yeah, I'm nailing it so far. <laughs> Hey everybody, I am Ian Adams. I'm a designer at Undead Labs, and I'm also a guy who owns a GameCube that was modded to play Japanese games. And that's why you're here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> this is going to be so fun. So, you have told me that it is important. So explain to me how we are starting this out, because you were particular in how you wanted us to be introduced yes. to this game. So, I want to start Mr. Driller here. This is Mr. Driller Drill Land, which is the fourth game in the Mr. Driller franchise. <laughs> Tied... <laughs> Sort of fourth, fifth, depending on if this came out or Ace came out first. I think it was this one, but they came out. They were in development at the same time. They have like cross crossover features. Ace is the Game Boy Advance version. Uh, and it has an amazing opening and intro that I want to make sure we capture. But it doesn't play all of that stuff if you've already got a save file. So we're going to start out uh, creating a new file. And then after we play for a little bit, we'll jump uh, into my save uh, all right so you've removed the memory card we're just going to we're going to experience this fresh yes. so you at home if you happen to have a gamecube that can play japanese games and you put the game in the first time this is what you will experience yep and boy is it an experience <laughs> i don't know a whole lot about this game i don't know a whole lot about what to expect but what you have told me and what little glimpses i have seen are a treasure so it is uh right now it's telling me hey you don't have a memory card in there and i'm saying that that's fine <laughs> uh, so Project Driller was this team at Namco that did all the like, the first five or six Mr. Driller games. Uh, there have been Mr. Driller games since then, but they're all like reuses of audio and uh, art assets, kind of just updated and, and shipped out. These first few games, though, were incredible passion projects, obviously. <laughs> like You can see this one we're watching, we were talking about how this feels like like the fifth or sixth game in like a beloved series. And we're like, we're huge, you know, the exciting new stuff. And here's all the characters you love, from Mr. <laughs> Thriller. Who, uh, who are these characters? These so this is Hori Ataru. Uh, he is Mr. Driller, the main Mr. Driller, Hori Susuma's brother. This is Anna. She showed up for the first time in Mr. Driller 2. Ooh. Uh, as the rival Driller, Hori <laughs> Susumu. Uh, this is... Hollinger Z, I think his name is. Uh, he is a robot. I can see. Drill. Uh, uh, this is Poochie. Poochie's theme is playing right now. Like, that's how seriously they take this stuff. <laughs> um, Poochie is Mr. Driller, uh, Hori Susumu's dog. This is Hori Susumu, the star of the Mr. Driller series. From the original? From the, uh, all the way back to Mr. Driller 1 in 1999, <laughs> four years before this one. This is not like a long-running <laughs> franchise. They just made... A ton of Mr. Driller games all in a row. And whoa now. Uh, that guy is clearly the bad guy from the second Mr. Driller, or Mr. Driller G, the third game. Of course. On PlayStation, like, with the world's worst disguise. But we're not supposed to know that. <laughs> oh, I see. We're accepting this. This, this is like when Bowser comes in with a beard. Yeah. And <laughs> so Hori Susumu has the title of Mr. Driller, because he's the best driller in the world, and he deals with the blocks that come up from the undergrounders' broken machines. His brother, Hori Ataru, is an unlicensed driller, because he and his family had a falling out. <laughs> is want to hang out with his dad, Hori Ataru, who just popped up on screen, who you bet probably know is Dig Dug. <laughs> Dig Dug is Mr. Driller's dad. This, this is rich plot. Yeah, there's a whole lot of background. There's a, like there's stuff. Uh, Mr. Driller's mom is Kissy from Baraduke. Baraduke is like a side-scrolling horizontal shooter arcade game. Are, are these just like all, is this Namco? Who is this from? These are all Namco games. Oh, okay. Um, and this isn't amazing, we're just not going to touch anything because it's going to go into the music video opening. There's a music video opening? Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, this is great. So you've got Mr. Driller and his brother. There's his dog, Poochie. These are the five gameplay modes in this game. The other drillers. Usagi is a, a rabbit from space. <laughs> of course. Uh, and see, they were rivals, and he, oh. oh, I don't like her. Oh, but now they're best friends. I see. A little bit of romance going on between them. This is adorable. <laughs> this is, it's... <laughs> uh, now we have the only English in the song. What? <laughs> that pile of stuff in the background for a second there, there were these like weird round balls. Those are the bacteria who are from Mr. Driller Ace. 
So if you've been playing that other game entirely, <laughs> the reason those weren't a bunch of generic stuff is that I've unlocked, or uh, that you can unlock them in Mr. Driller Ace and add them into this game. So I'm, I'm going to need you to explain to me how many up to, so there were four of Mr. Driller games up to this point that came out like and, back to back and to back this annually. Yeah, 1999, Mr. Driller, 2000, Mr. Driller 2, 2001, Mr. Driller G on the PlayStation and in the arcade, ah. and then 2002, Mr. Driller Ace on the Game Boy Advance, and Mr. Driller Drill Land. I see. How many of these, if any, have made it to the United States? Uh, Mr. Driller made it over here. Okay, so if the original. If you're gonna get that, Mr. Driller 2 came out on like the Game Boy Advance, I think. Oh, okay. Um, if you're gonna get Mr. Driller 1, I strongly recommend getting the Dreamcast version because it has a totally amazing design choice. And I love this song. I like uh, this menu in general. It's really pretty. They did a really good job. All the all the presentation stuff in this game, like I said, it's just like this does feel very passion project done. actually. Yeah, um, people cared. They cared a whole lot while they were working on this thing. Um, so, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, Mr. Driller One. If you're gonna get it, get it on Dreamcast because it's compatible with every accessory released on the Dreamcast. You can play Mr. Driller with. Um, not the, obviously, the pad, you can play it with the fight stick, you can play it with the fishing rod, you can play it with the microphone from Seaman, you can play it with what? the Samba de Amigo maracas. <laughs> yes. They included compatibility for everything. This is wonderful. Uh, how, did, how did you learn all of this about the Driller franchise? I had a good friend, a guy named Ben Chamberlain, who was really into them and started showing them off, and the more I was playing them, the more I was just like, oh, this is fantastic. I, I am excited to see what the actual game of this is. Yes. So there's the Dig Dug affiliation. Is there, right. like, is it Dig Dug style gameplay, or? It's, it's inspired by Dig Dug. If you look this game up online, you'll see a story about how people were working on this, like, as a Skunk Works project at Namco, they were calling it Dig Dug 3. Um, the detail that they got pulled off to work on Ridge Racer Type 4 always gets brought up. I don't know if that story is true. Uh, it's one of those stories that you look up online and you're like, that's interesting, what's the source on this? And as you follow them, they're all like sourcing from each other. Each no one's willing to be the guy who actually knows. <laughs> um, Story-wise right now, we've been invited to Drill Land, oh. this amazing drill-themed theme park, and we get there and it's just this weird little building and we're all kind of bummed out that it's not that impressive. <laughs> And this woman we trust sticks us in the elevator, and... <laughs> 500 meters, which is a meaningful distance in the Driller franchise. <laughs> <laughs> so Driller fans will like, no, 500 meters, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I, lots of levels into 500 meters. <laughs> and we pop out in a somehow well-lit, gigantic underground theme park. My cat's hovering around the GameCube, which I've like always sets up red flags in my head. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so far, so good. Yeah. So <laughs> we've arrived down here and we're excited to look around. Again, I just the amount of time it's taking to get to the gameplay and the gameplay. So uh, the main character, Hori Susumu, is, is Dig Dug's son. His mom is the character from Baradu. OK. Um, which are both classic arcade games. And there's this meta level of the gameplay where this was Namco people being like, this is a classic arcade game. He is the child of classic arcade game characters. That's how this game feels. Right, and, but, and yet we have some pretty lengthy little opening cutscenes. Yeah, tons of story. So right here we've got one of the game modes. This is uh, the Hole of Druaga, which is a reference to the Konami series, the Tower of Druaga, which is like a, a light, RPG action game that was in the arcades. Uh, this is by far the hardest one to play if you don't speak Japanese because you've got like item management and potions oh, and spells and things. Um, over here is the Dream and Parade. Uh, if we were to watch the Dream and Parade right now, it would be really boring because this saves file doesn't have any of the bacteria from Mr. Driller Ace copied over, so you'd see the same character over and over again. Oh, I see. Um, Mr. Driller Ace has this whole like creature breeding thing in it because these games always have a bunch of mechanics they don't need. <laughs> uh, World Drill Tour is sort of the baseline mode. This is the most like 
okay. plain old previous game, Mr. Driller. Just arcade style kind of more? Yeah. Okay. Character select, that kind of thing. Uh, over here is Star Driller, which is really close to the base game. Um, has some references to a game called Star Trigon, which the same team worked on and released, that has this art style, and Hori Susumu's in it. And it's a one-button arcade game about, like, hopping off planets that you're revolving around and circling them and making triangles by this, orbiting them. This, I mean, this sounds complex. Like, like this is a very dense game, actually. It's, it's, there's a surprisingly large amount going on. There's Drill Town, which I'll pop into for a second. Drindy Adventure, <laughs> which is, it's taking mechanics that were introduced in Mr. Driller G, where the game uh, is a little bit less arcadey and a little bit more strategic and making a mode out of that. And Horror Night House, which is another totally new set of mechanics that focus on... Uh, each of these has its own sponsor character, so this one, by default, you play as uh, Hori Ataru... Or no, sorry, um, Hori Taizo. This one, you're Hori Ataru, the, you know, the rebellious white-haired brother, <laughs> which is Black Rabbit. Um, in Hole of Druaga, you play as Anna, saving Hori Susumu. Okay. Uh, this one, you play as uh, anybody... And this one you play as Hori Susuma. So then, just to give you again an idea of like the level of complexity of this thing, you can come in here. There are a bunch of trading cards for sale. Whoa. That have pictures of the characters and little bits of detail about them. There are. And you earn points basically just by playing the game. There's this whole good shop where you've got balloons and little multicolored boxes and this feels characters like what's and like. Wow. Yeah, this feels like what Smash has grown into now, actually, where there are just tons of different modes and features, and how you can collect trophies in here. This just yep. stuff and stuff and stuff, which and stuff and so <laughs> so much content. There's the for, item for shop. a four-year-old franchise that was coming out every year. Yeah. Um, so this stuff are all bonuses that you can you can buy with in-game currency. So if you're playing and you just can't beat a level, you can come in here and be like, okay, for the level one difficulty of World Drill Tour. It's not letting me pick the other ones. They're not unlocked yet. Oh, I'm going to come in and here's an extra man. Here's, uh, or sorry, that's a shield. Here's five lives instead of three. <laughs> uh, this gives me an extra 5% air before I start playing. So you can uh, make the game a little bit easier if you're stuck on things. There's items you can buy with in-game currency. And then a sound test section, which is great. Oh wait, no. This is the copy over from the uh, oh the GBA version. Oh, it's got GBA cross functionality. That's yes, cool. Yes, it does. Uh, that's you could copy those points back and forth across the games, and then this one. Uh, oh, here we go. I forgot there were even more built-ins <laughs> in a movie theater for, uh, for the cutscenes. Of so course. Yeah, you've got the music palace. Swear. Whoa. Uh, so all the music in this game is done by this guy Go Shina. Yeah. Uh, is, like, has he done anything else that I'd recognize? Or? This is the main thing that people know him for. There's a YouTube channel you can search pretty easily if you look for Goshina that has a bunch of his soundtracks. Oh, cool. That you can check out. Is it mostly other, like, Japanese games or other yeah. things? Yeah. Okay. It's quite catchy, actually. So right now we have... You can see there's, like, misting numbers 15 and then 24 and 2 and 6. Uh, as you play the game, and I think sometimes it's usually with buying items, much like Smash Brothers does. Like, you do something else and it will give you another audio track. Movie theater, drill in, library, like... There's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff. This thing is packed <laughs> to the gills. So here's, <laughs> here's the main Mr. Driller gameplay mode. I, I'm so excited. This is default Mr. Driller. <laughs> and this is part of why we played with a fresh save file. The first time you go to any mode of the game, you get a cutscene. <laughs> Every time. Wow. Uh. <laughs> you can, you're picking up some relationships here. The rabbit is protected from Ataru. Poochie doesn't like Ataru. <laughs> Alright. We've got our briefing. I love this. And you get into here, and each of these has its own... Like, this, here's a top level menu for this game. Jeez. <laughs> like, I'm. Of its own art style. Uh, so each of these characters is balanced differently. You've got Hori Susumu, sort of your baseline character. Okay. Mario. Yeah, he's your, he's your Mario. 
Uh, Anna is faster at drilling, faster at moving, and absorbs air or uses up oxygen faster. Oh, okay. So you've got to be quicker about collecting oxygen with her. So she's sort of the, I'm good at this. I know what I'm doing. I can play a harder character. All right. Um, Horius Haru is even faster at all of those things than Anna. Um, Horitaizo is interesting. He is slower at moving, really fast at depleting air, um, but his drills, when he hits something, it destroys instantly. Ooh. Which means that there are actually some strategy differences from him, because you can get into areas that would be guaranteed death for other characters before stuff falls. Uh, I like that. I like that it's not just, like, just that certain characters are, like, have higher stats, basically, in certain areas, but, like, that there's actual functional difference. Right. That's kind of cool. Um, holding a Z, uh, his thing, he's actually, he's, I think, average oxygen depletion. I couldn't swear to it at this point. Um, but he can take two hits per life. I like that the robot also depletes <laughs> oxygen. Yes. <laughs> God, it's, there's something in his machinery that requires oxygen or something. To sure. Cool. <laughs> uh, you know, combustion. Yeah. So, he can, it. yeah, he can take two hits. So he's sort of like... Strictly worse in most ways, but he can take two hits. So okay. he's a really good character for if you're play, you're new to the game. I see. And it's just super frustrating how often you're dying. You basically get to double your lives with this guy. Nice. Okay. And uh, how does this work? And Pucci is he's about as quick as Hori. He doesn't deplete oxygen too quickly. And instead of being able to only jump up one block, which I'll show, you can normally only you can like step up one block. Poochie can go up too. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, not unlocked on this save, but I'll have him later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Usagi we'll... the Black Rabbit, who has... <laughs> he's the most complicated character. Yeah, we'll be back with... Uh, maybe in the next episode, we'll be back with the uh, save... His save plugged in, which will... Yes. So... Uh, I guess even more content available to us. Yes, which is insane. <laughs> okay, so we're, in, we're playing. Here we go. So we're playing. So it's a one-button plus navigation game. So the goal... Of the game is to get down. You okay. See, right now I'm at a depth of 12 out of 500 meters. I want oxygen. I want to keep that oxygen meter full. Okay. Uh, and I'm taking things slow right now. Generally speaking, you can see when blocks meet a light color, they merge together. I see. Okay. Uh, which turns them into one big thing. So if you can get those yellows to connect somehow. Yeah. Ah, okay. Up oh, there. They'll merge into one big thing. Nice. Okay. They'll also. Any collection of blocks bigger than four, when they drop, they'll vanish. Ah, uh, nice. Which, I guess that's how... It that's doesn't, how, it doesn't help you with depth, but for score, that like, good for score, yeah. I imagine. Well, it also means that you don't automatically have a ton of stuff above your head trying to uh, kill you. That makes sense. I love this song, playing. <laughs> yeah, it's... I'm a huge fan of the music in this game. <laughs> this is really adorable, actually. So is there, like, tactically, is there any reason why you wouldn't want to just down, 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 down? Um, there is. Okay. Usually if you do that, you're going to run out of oxygen. Ah, uh, So you need to be able to go left and right. Uh, the other couple of blocks that matter right now, these guys with the X's in them. Yeah. Um, if you take one of those out, it takes multiple hits. Uh, and when you do it, you immediately lose 20 oxygen. Oh, man. So. Uh, and these things are one hit to get rid of but they're never going to merge with anything else. Uh, so they will stay above you being a, a threat indefinitely. So good to try to break them on your way down. Yep. Okay. They're not hypercritical. You can live without having done it, but... But if you can get them out of the way, all the better. Yeah. So every 100 meters... Hey! Clear. Nice! And one of the things that uh, you'll notice if you're paying closer attention is that Right now, the blocks are all really big. Uh, and I believe they, they will stay really big for the difficulty that I selected. I don't think they're going to get smaller on me. But when you start playing the higher difficulties, not only are you going further overall, but in some of the modes, you're going further and the blocks are smaller. Oh, man. Which means that you have to fall extra blocks to get where you're trying to go. So... With the blocks being smaller, are you mean that they're they're clumped less, or that like there are actually smaller units that you're having to be more precise in breaking? Um, I mean that they are actually. Oh, hell. oh, it's a rock. <laughs> it's a rock. That one doesn't go away. But I got a ton of air that I didn't need because I had taken a hit and was at full air. Um, 
I mean that they're, they're smaller blocks. Part of it's just the game goes wider. You oh, okay. Get, get bigger oh, I see. That, that makes sense. Can you, like, is falling too far a problem, or are you no, usually... No, there's, okay. there's no amount of falling that the game thinks is bad. Yeah! So this is a fun... These are nice rest stages, where it's only two colors, so you wind up getting a ton of huge combos. These are... When you're playing at higher difficulty levels, and, like, you're constantly about to run out of oxygen and Whoa. everything's super tense, you get these levels where you're able to be like, okay. That's kind of nice pacing-wise, actually. This one kind of plays itself for a little bit. Oh no, I thought that was going to touch before <laughs> That was incredibly me. timed. <laughs> well, you Angel drilled all the way from away. India to Brazil. So that, that bit where it's telling me what country I'm in is a nod. In all the previous Driller games, one of the main mechanics was uh, each difficulty was associated with a country. By popping in and out, I was able to get both things. If I'd stayed there, the health would have fallen oh. on me. Uh, and the next thing would have fallen immediately through it and crushed me. Whereas if I waited until it settled, I could pop in and out. And get I it. see. Oh no, in Australia. So, so it used to be tied to, to like... Yeah, the whole difficulty would be... Oh, you're playing in, you know, Australia, which is a medium difficulty thing, so you're going to go all the way to 500 meters. Um, no, oh, no. <laughs> right, I gotta be more careful. I'm down to one life. Oh, no, I died. Oh, no. All right. I'm going to give this one one more shot. We got this. Where? You got this, rather. All right. Um, I won't do as much demonstrating. <laughs> okay, now it's serious time. Yeah. Serious driller time. I... L you were describing earlier the, uh, the sort of the rich fiction that has like, not only the story that it's telling, but also all of the references to other things. Yes. I, it feels like, I imagine, like, if a game oh, like no. Retro City Rampage or something was, right. like, the, like, is just somebody from, game. like, from a non, or, like, just some game that references tons of other games that you kind of have to know the joke. Like, sure. I can't, that would be utterly impenetrable in a non, <laughs> like, yeah. English first language country. Well, I mean, that's part of one of the b many, many bizarre things. I love that animation when he falls. Oh, I thought you died. That's just like a fall for moving, for barely getting out of the that way. Is a, that's great. You get a time punishment off of it. And I'm going to get this oxygen. But it's, it's also the Indiana Jones narrow escape, like yep. sliding through the door. I, that's great. I, I wish more of these had shown up in the States or that were more... Like, are there any that are on a semi-recent console, like, virtual console or, like, a port or anything um, like that? Um, I believe... I know the Xbox 360 had a port. Okay. Um, and it was very... it was very simple. It has this mode. Okay. Using this art. <laughs> <laughs> but none of the other wealth of content that we saw in all those menus. Correct. Okay. Um, the last one that really felt like a big, uh this kind of passion project that the early ones were was the Nintendo DS one. Okay. Uh, it was original DS, not, not yes, 3DS. Yes, okay. original DS. Uh, which is, I think, called it's either Drilling Spirits or Drilling Strike. It's a little bit hard to remember because the name is really close to what they named the uh, Dig Dug on the DS <laughs> that they made. Has the Dig Dug franchise ever referenced this in a similar way, or is it the big, um, like, the big fish. Thing. No, it has. The The characters from Mr. Driller are in the DS awesome. Big Dug game. Oh, this is really dumb. <laughs> hey, you made it. I, sh I shouldn't have. That was a really bad move on my part. <laughs> this is really adorable. Like, I, I, I want games like this to be more readily available. <laughs> it's, I mean, man, yeah. It's just, it's... Wait. There we go. Whoa, nice. That's, uh, That's it helps that this right dude's there. really fast. Okay, so yeah, this is a guy that uses oxygen faster, but is really quick. Yep. Okay. No! Ah! Uh, I did not climb fast enough. Come on, Australia. You're not gonna take me out again, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> That'll destroy that. And that. And there we go. There may well be, but I'd like to imagine that there's actually... That there's like a limited run anime series. 
<laughs> based on this oh, man. franchise. If, if there is one, somebody tell me. Oh. <laughs> That's one of the tricky things that happens is because combos keep happening off screen. Oh, uh, it can catch you off you, guard. You can be like, this is a safe thing. And then while you're not paying attention, stuff combos from off screen. And the thing that you were standing on is not a safe thing anymore. I want to see, like, in the next games done quick, like, somewhere near the Tetris Grandmaster block. <laughs> I want to see some, I want to see somebody take this game on. I would, I would love to see someone who's a lot better than me play it because I adore the game, but I'm also aware that I'm, <laughs> I'm decent at it. It's been years since I've played much, but uh, the the Dreamcast version's leaderboards made it clear to me that <laughs> there, there are people who are a lot better at this game than I am. I can see why you like this. This is, like, aside from the fun of the brain puzzle challenge, this is just, like, feel-good, yeah, it's just happy so, time like, game. It's just so pleasant to be in their little Mr. Driller world for a little while. Yeah, it's the same thing I love about Katamari games. Just Absolutely. Like, colorful, fun, awesome music. It's this very specific era of Namco. <sighs> Come on, man. I was like... Uh, I was 17 meters from the end. So close. Do you want to give a shot? Uh, I will give it a quick shot, yeah. All right. Oh, I, I've automatically dropped you in as a hymn because I can't read Japanese. Uh, and I didn't know <laughs> what each menu was. You know, that's a fine enough excuse. But, uh, so, dude, uh, how reckless is this? That's a bad idea. You got it. Yeah, all right. Uh, you can drill up. Oh. If you're under things. Oh, no. That it's, was... It's pretty risky, but it's doable. <laughs> I'm, I feel like I'm already getting myself in some... In some uh, bad situations here. So I assume aiming for large chunks is usually a it's usually a good idea. Yeah, because it means big combos happen above your head, which is good for your score. Yeah, yeah. Not thinking ahead. Not thinking ahead. It's very much. It's one of those games where someone can explain strategy to you. <laughs> And that's great. But good luck thinking. Eh, good luck oh, thinking that it was, through. That was lucky. Was close. <laughs> You're doing super well though. Yeah, yay. But it's you have to just like play enough that you internalize strategy. <laughs> yeah, You're like, yeah. I recognize these patterns, and I feel safe running around near this one, and I oh, don't totally. feel safe near that one. Yeah. It's any one of these games. Like I think Luminez, like yeah, with Tetris. Any one of those that you start seeing like when you close your eyes after a while. Absolutely, yeah. Like with Rock Band, I don't see individual notes anymore. I see patterns that I recognize that I follow. Yeah. 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 I just kind of want to, like, drill in time with the music. <laughs> it's just so catchy. I can understand. Yeah. No. Uh. Whew. Close. Narrow escape. Yeah. Ah, not that time though. Yeah, that one. Uh, two hundred. Yeah, I'll take it. And then they give you this nice break level. It's nice. Is it pretty much like every third level, or is it just every now and then? Uh, it's usually in, at this difficulty. It's every third level. I think it stays about that pace, but but it, you start needing it more and more as you go. Yeah. That when it sense. starts being the kind of thing where you show up in these levels with like two hundred air remaining. <laughs> and you're like, oh, thank God, there's going to be a bunch of big combos. Most of the air is going to be available. Because <laughs> you'll notice they also, they don't see those white blocks that don't combo in these levels. Oh, yeah, I see. Because they are specifically designed to be the, the area where you're like, like, there's one white block. So they exist, but they're very, very rare. Yeah, can't get to that. Can't get Ah, uh, almost. Almost. Cursed Australians. <laughs> they got us every time. So brutal. This is fun. I, I would like to do another episode of this with your save in there just to see what is different. All right. But uh, yeah, let's do it. I will do that. Thank, now. thank you for watching. We'll be back with more of this next time.